Hello. I would like to thank our three organizers who had uh, the splendid idea to, uh, of organizing this session uh, where we can look at how uh, ancient artists have treated textiles over the past, but also how ancient textile illustrations have been treated by scholars. The Aegean Neolithic is one of those periods uh, for which we have uh, some tentative illustrations of fabrics and clothing, but there are not any actual finds to be compared. For this reason, textile imagery becomes even more significant for the history of the earliest textile production and the pioneer use of, the, uh, of fabric in Southern Europe. The main source of evidence are assemblages of Neolithic figurines that give us information about the costume and painted uh, ceramics as well as some more decorated artifacts, uh, such as seals, providing information about the general aesthetic and trends. A topic often discussed in connection with Neolithic pottery styles, the imitation of textile patterns, finds in the Neolithic art one of its best and most uh, explicit expressions. Whole series, series of patterns appear to be inspired by woven fabrics, while sometimes they accurately represent textile patterns. Apart from a generic similarity uh, observed on geometric motifs, uh, there are repetitions of archetypal textile patterns known from entirely different periods and cultures. One of these characteristic patterns is the rhombus, surrounded by tooth-like elements, a typical pattern of the Middle Neolithic period. Most of the patterns are straight-lined of a digital type uh, that is consisting of very simple or complex combinations of squares, sometimes giving the impression of a woven canvas or maybe a weaver's cartoon. These ornaments are symmetrically arranged over in, uh, of, often in contrasting patterns in vertical, horizontal or sloping zones, often covering the whole surface of the vessels, like the ornaments of uh, oriental uh, kilims. During um, an experimental approach to recreating these motifs, Besides the regaining of the feel of Neolithic fabrics, we were able to see how they would have been woven and what was the degree of difficulty in weaving various patterns. Moreover, we have seen in practice um, something already presumed, that this type of designs required counting of the threads in order to create accurately repeated motifs plus pottery illustrations led to conclusions about the weaving technologies, the aesthetics and the skills of the Neolithic weavers that we probably would not have had if, we, if uh, some fabrics had been preserved. The inspiration from the textile uh, creations, even specific um, uh, hints of the use uh, of fabrics, uh, is a very characteristic and powerful element during the Aegean Neolithic. It is also reflected on some illustrations, which are not only abstract transfers of motifs, uh, but a realistic depiction of woven artifacts, like uh, fringe textiles, woven straps covering a vase, or uh, an openly woven basket. While observing the evolution of the textile pattern phenomenon, uh, we can see that simple symmetrical motifs uh, appear already in the early Neolithic. In the Middle Neolithic, they show more complex standardized varieties. The woven style culminates during the Vimini culture when extremely complex interlocking patterns are observed. The impression crystallized is that these intricate patterns are inconceivable without the existence of decorated textiles. In, the addition, in addition to this reflection, specific textile techniques can be identified, uh, such as band weaving and kilting, as seen on some representations of connecting stitches. We can uh, safely assume that there is a connection regarding colors. What we can see on the painted pottery, that is a choice of one to three colors, 
is restricted to the color range of the mineral garments used for pottery manufacture, but uh, you, we can imagine that the Neolithic textiles were more colorful dyed with plant dyes. The potters sometimes seem to put effort to go beyond this natural limitation of by drawing rustered surfaces to create the illusion of polychromy. The second category of the Neolithic textile illustrations regards clothing and derives from the study of figurines. Unfortunately, there are not many dressed figurines and the ones available provide costume elements with a high level of abstraction. However, we can discern some funda fundamental elements of the apparel. First of all, we can see that Neolithic garments were not made of large pieces of fabric like those of the classical antiquity or the later T-shaped clothes, but they were made of small pieces of fabric. They were uh, fitted to the body, while features like uh, necklines, sleeves, belts and aprons can be also discerned. Since the pattern of the uh, different uh, body parts often show a different direction, it seems more likely to have a combination of various clothing items and not all over dresses. In some cases, it seems that the pieces of uh, uh, fabric of the lower part uh, had been sewn together in such a way that stripes may, made an angle at the front, a tailoring technique known from many uh, later periods. It seems that the bold antithetic style was already a favorite element of the Neolithic look and is not only seen in cases of stripes but also on complex patterns such as the, uh, as the diamond weave as we will see next. The biggest surprise, however, during the study of the Neolithic dress is the fact that also trousers were worn, particularly but by women. These were long and wide, narrowing towards the ankles. We do not know in which cases women, women uh, wore the one or the other garment. The relevant evidence comes mainly from figurines where humans are depicted with their legs apart. Such a figure is depicted on the iconic um, amulet from the Franctic cave where a figure, where a figure perhaps in a dancing posture, wears uh, pants shown from de decorated fabrics joined together uh, to create a contrasting pattern. The existence of trousers uh, can also be assumed through uh, some figurings with patterns that run around the legs. Let's note here that the main creation for uh, the main reason uh, for a delayed recognition of clothes of, on figurines was the traditional interpretation of their decorations as ta tattoos or body painting. This reading is of course possible, but it cannot be applied when clear tailoring elements such as necklines, sleeves, belts, legs, and most significantly the seams of clo uh, clothing <coughs> are recognized. We can see here a figuring on which even the draping is um, draping details are given. The puzzle of uh, seeing naked body parts with patterns is, I believe, due to the fact that artists of all periods often favor to represent anatomic details on dressed figures. Another element often observed on Neolithic figurings even uh, on some very abstract ones, is the straps um, around, uh, uh, arranged uh, like an X on the torso. This accessory made of fabric or leather would be perhaps useful to keep the garments close to the body, perhaps in a case of high mobility. Their presence in many other prehistoric cultures might indicate identity or status. The outfit of the Neolithic garment sometimes resembles the Minoan Mycenaean costume, which appears now closer to the Neolithic um, uh, clothing traditions. The presence of both types of garments, skirts and trousers, is not entirely unknown in Mycenaean Greece, since there are some uh, rare indications of trousers on Mycenaean figurines. This fact leads us to the thought that the white garments of the Greek antiquity replaced the prehistoric dress, which was made of smaller pieces of cloth. 
This view also provides a reasonable explanation for the long absence of loom weights in the Neolithic since the creation of these garments did not require a large warp weighted loom. The, these iconographic indications lead us to a significant re-evaluation of the Neolithic tailoring and shift the appearance of the trousers millennia earlier than thought. We should note that the first pants in our archaeological context come from China, while in Europe we see that Similaun Iceman was wearing a kind of trousers already from the beginning of the Bronze Age, challenging the traditional view that this type of garment did not appear before the Iron Age, and it was first associated with horseback riding. The examples for the Aegean, from the Aegean, uh, though, are not an exception. In Neolithic cultures of Balkans, there is evidence showing that during the Vincha and Kukuteni periods, people wore uh, uh, trousers as well. Still quite enigmatic are the Kukuteni trousers, showing patterns on anatomic details, and clearer are those of Vincha, where a distinct local ele element, a kind of garter, appears. Another important element um, for linking um, iconography with archaeological finds is the presence of jewels um, fixed on garments. At various parts of clothing applied jewels like um, a usually spherical oval, pointed oval or ring shaped um, can be seen. These look enormous but we must consider that the scale is not right. Figuring makers did not uh, portray the jewelry on a real scale because it would be challenging to attribute the co correct proportions on such, a small, um, such small objects, while if they did so, this would, not be, would have been visible. This means that we are dealing with a conscious convention that increased the size of the jewels to make them discernible. The same might hold true for the woven patterns on clothes, which in reality would have been much smaller. The shape repetition of these ornaments stimulates the challenge to identify them. Were there stuff fabric ornaments that highlighted clothes with their bold size and shape, or they were made of non-woven materials? A suggestion I would like to stress here is that these ornaments represent seashells. Most probably, Spondylus gederopus, uh, which is often found in Neolithic sites as, ju as jewels. Some examples with, with uh, several tiny holes perhaps are perhaps testimonies of their attachment to clothing. The full round applications would uh, represent whole or partly uh, worked shells, while the ring-shaped uh, 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 ones re could uh, rep represent spondylus rings. The same or similar jewels were also worn as pendants or belt buckles. To sum up, imagery on uh, Aegean and Neolithic uh, ceramics and figurines provide us with valuable information about textiles and clothing and attest sophisticated weaving uh, techniques which uh, reach the highest level of expertise in, conception, in the conception and production of complex geometric motifs as well as tailoring techniques with very developed for this early period. Some of these traditions, such as the tight sleeved uh, bodies with the deep décolleté, continue in the Bronze Age, but they get lost with the beginning of the historical era with, um, when the use of a warp-weighted uh, loom is generalized and the garments get a much larger surface and plenty of folds. Thank you. Thank you.